So coming up next, we have um, <laughs> incident life cycle uh, and incident response management planning with, um, <laughs> so sorry, Rahul Patel and Tanya Rice. So I'll give them a quick introduction. Rahul Patel is a seasoned cyber and information security professional with over 25 years of experience defending the availability, confidentiality, and integrity of information assets. He is presently leading election information security and risk management efforts at the office of the Cook County uh, Clerk and Chicago Board of Election uh, uh, Commissioner as election information security officer. Patel holds a PhD from North Central University, an MBA from DePaul University, and an MS from Illinois Institute of Technology. And, oops, sorry. And Tanya Rice. Uh, was appointed Director of Elections uh, by Cook County Clerk Karen A. Yarbrough, Yarbrough in 2019, in which capacity she supports operations for one of the largest uh, election jurisdictions in the country. Rice began her career in elections in 2005 as a political uh, science graduate student at the University of Michigan, where she was a National Science Foundation graduate research fellow specializing in public opinion on voting technology and post-election audits, as well as the political participation of language minority citizens. Rice holds a JD from Northwestern University School of Law and a BA from Northwestern University. Please welcome them. Thank you very much for the introduction. And thank you to the DEF CON organizers and all the attendees present uh, and allowing us to share some best practices for local election officials, which we develop based on our professional experiences and review of expert literature on incident life cycle and incident response management planning. So first, I can share a little bit of background information about elections in Chicago and suburban Cook County, which are complex operations governed by two offices. The Cook County Clerk is the chief election authority for suburban Cook County, which consists of 126 municipalities. The Chicago Board of Election Commissioners oversees election administration for voters who reside in the city of Chicago. Both the jurisdictions have about 1.5 million registered voters, so the combined 3 million registered voters makes Cook County one of the largest jurisdictions in the country. Our offices have a team of IT professionals, but we are very fortunate to share a dedicated elections information security officer who helps strengthen our cybersecurity posture. So over the past few years, like most local election officials, we found that the volume, types, and quality of cybersecurity attacks in elections have become more damaging and disruptive, and new types of cybersecurity incidents have emerged. In the white paper we developed for DEF CON this year, we wanted to provide a holistic and practical resource for local election officials and the public to more readily understand incident response management planning. So we provide the overarching workflow for election security incident response. We describe point in line analysis, which is a methodology that considers several factors, such as attack vectors, uh, motives, probability, and impact. And we also provide several templates or samples for incident response management, which local election officials can modify for their jurisdictions. So we begin our analysis with a general problem in election cybersecurity. A cyber incident can span a wide spectrum of malicious cyber activity. And for the elections environment, it can range from the theft of voter registration data to the disruption or manipulation of the vote tally. In this challenging environment, election officials and IT professionals must find effective ways to decrease response times, decrease recovery times, and limit costs. So now Rahul will walk you through our technical approach and solutions. These methods can be modified by any local election office. Thanks, Tanya. So um, before we talk about the approach, um, let's uh, learn the cycle of like how from start to finish what happens when the incident occurs, right? So. Um, at start, we have normal operation, everything works fine, right? And then something happens at that vertical line, right? Something bad happens. Then we start working on detecting that incident, right? We might have a manual process or automated process. Some of the APT kind of 
issues that that detection takes months right some issues they are more apparent and it might take a uh, few minutes few uh, hours but it takes time to detect an incident right once we detect the incident then we start working on troubleshooting what we need to do um, what are the symptoms uh, what systems affected how do we recover we create some kind of planning right we don't at the start we don't know what exactly the plan is but at the end of that troubleshooting cycle we have some idea of this is what i want to do right and this is how i'm going to fix the problem then the next stage is now we are going to start responding to it now uh, we made a plan now we are going to implement that plan right uh, and at the end of that response cycle depending on how much we need to do there is some time that we are spending now our response is success at some point of time then we are going to start recovering right now there is a recover and restore there are two steps that we are going to take first we are recover going to recover the system at the end of the recovery um, we we can say that now that issue does not exist system is back to normal and we can start using the system but we haven't started using the system yet right from system perspective we are back to normal but we haven't started using it yet then we might have lost some data we all there is a point of time recovery time right we might load the information we might test that what is happening is everything normal now and then we start asking user to start using it or another systems that is using this system that starts using it right then our this restore process starts at the end of the restore process is when let's say you have 1000 users or a few systems using your this subsystem we when we go up to that level of utilization that's when you are back to normal right until then we are still recovering we are still restoring right now if you think about all this different stages there are certain necessary waste and there are some productive steps and i say necessary waste means it's necessary right detection and the troubleshooting is necessary otherwise you wouldn't be able to figure out what is the plan of action right but i say it is waste because we could do that uh, before the incident can happen right if we know that what are the symptoms if we can pre uh detect that if there is a ddos uh, for example if there is a ddos attack what would be the symptoms right if, if i know that i don't have to get into the ddos before i start figuring out how am i going to detect right and what is my response what is my plan for responding re uh, recovering restoring i don't have to wait for that incident to happen i can figure that out in advance right so part of this detect part of this troubleshooting right that's that's a necessary waste but it doesn't have to be at this time it can be done in advance if you look carefully that what exactly are we doing in responding and recovering and restoring there are some steps there that too you could preplan before the incident happens and you will find some uh, necessary waste in those area as well the idea is we are going to collapse this two vertical line as much as possible right so we are uh, not in that incident for very long time right so how do we do that um for election now this this time um i want to go back sorry who is taking the pictures but i want to go back to here now um that there, there was an incident at capital one right a uh, couple of weeks back right and and you might have heard the news that um the way they detected and the way they responded in some of the news they have said that they did a very good job because the whole incident last only 10 days election is one day right so if we are running into this election uh this kind of incident we don't have a day we don't have hours we have only few minutes to go from from that to here right and there is a lot of expertise involved in many of this 
in detection mechanism, in troubleshooting, in responding, in recovering, right? So we cannot do it alone. Uh, yesterday, who came to the speaker's track here? I mean, there was common theme, the resources, right? Uh, so one organization cannot have expertise and enough resources. So we rely on a lot of different partners, federal partners, state, local. A um, lot of DHS folks are here. Um, and, and private companies too. Um, I met somebody from Cloudflare. So there are a lot of partners who offer the services to election uh, 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 administration, right? So working with those is very important. Find out where you can get the expertise and pre-plan. Pre-plan how are we going to detect the issue, how we are going to troubleshoot, and if we, have, if we can pre-stage some of this, then we are going to collapse this uh, total incident time, right? So uh, the idea is when to create the scenarios. Now every incident, like, uh, you, uh, every system that you are using, you can create a sub-boundaries, that this is a boundary, for example, election night result system. We have a, a system to upload the uh, election results to a website, right? And then the website publishes the result. So that's a subsystem. There is a boundary there, right? So that particular boundary, how many systems we have, what kind of attack vector we are going to face, right? What are the vulnerabilities? What, so different aspect about the system, the system's profile itself, what we have to defend it from, uh, what do we have in our hand, what is, uh, 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 what is uh, the mechanism that we have in place for detection, what is the defense mechanism that we can avoid the issue itself, right? And then how are we going to recover and re uh, restore, right? So all of these factors, once you consider, you might be able to come up with a single page plan. And this is a scenario for only one kind of incident, not per system, for only one kind of incident for that uh, specific boundary, right? And everything that you have at your hand is in that one document, right? One page item. Uh, what we have in the defense, how critical this issue is, uh, who do we contact in case of the incident, uh, what do we talk to, the, to other teams, how do we communicate to the public, how do we communicate internally, right? Um, what are the symptoms of the issues, right? Everything is documented in this one page document per incident type, right? And I'm going to go um, later uh, into how many incident scenarios that we are going to make. But for one particular incident, every information that you need to handle that incident is in one page. Right. Now that's a lot of work. When you start developing this incident scenario template, uh, you might run into the issues like, we don't have an answer. If you have an answer for a particular item, that's not the answer that you like, right? Uh, but this is, this is the idea that when you are doing this in off election cycle, you're going to find your own gaps, that what gaps we have in our protection mechanism to avoid the issue itself. What are the gaps that we have in our detection system that's not efficient and then that necessary waste, reducing the necessary waste. How can we do something better to detect the issue? Right? What is the response mechanism that we have in place? Can we automate it? Right? Do we need a human in intervention? Uh, so all of those questions are going to come up. And going through this one scenario might take days. Right? Uh, you are going to involve your system owner, your uh, security staff, IT staff, everyone. Right? But once you get rolling, then you are going to get an idea and you are going to get to the new next scenario, next scenario, and so forth. Right? But once we have this template, um, then now you are ready to roll, right? You are not, uh, uh, you are avoiding much of that necessary waste time while incident is in progress, right? That's the idea. So there's a simple example, election nights uh, reporting system. We have one system uh, that publishes the result to the uh, general public. And then there is a system that we are using to upload, for example, right? There is an internal network from where we are uploading the result and then there is an internet where everyone else is uh, uh, getting that results, right? So you have, we have two lines, two communication lines and two points, right? 
uh, there might be more than one server, there might be more than one system, but the type of machine is only one, and I mean two here, right? So two lines, two points, there are four different uh, places where uh, that we have to uh, protect, right? Seven different kind of vulnerabilities that we are going to protect it from, right? And uh, what are we, what is our end goal? You know, maintaining the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Three different outcomes, right? You have uh, 84 different scenarios for this one subsystem, right? And for every scenario, we, we are going to make a plan like that, right? In a searchable format, in a filterable format. So when you need it, some, uh, as soon as you have some indication, symptoms, some searchable phrase uh, in that system, it is going to bring up exact scenario that how we are going to handle that. One another thing I forgot to mention here is uh, the options, right? So best option, next best option, and the worst case scenario. So the idea is when you mature these scenarios, uh, we have only one day for the election, right? And in election night result, um, it's mostly like after 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. everybody is going to watch it. So you have a very small window where the system is uh, going to be useful, right? So your best option you should be able to do within few minutes, less than 10 minutes, for for example, right? Something that you could do right away within 10 minutes that you can get the system back up and normal, right? If that doesn't work, there is a next best option. Maybe an hour. We don't have much time. Right? And the worst case scenario is we are going to declare a major incident and we are going to work on uh, for a long time. Right? But you are going to try to figure out like what is my best case, what I can do very quickly. Right? So back here. So we have 84 different scenarios in this case. Right? Uh, now if you consider all the different kind of uh, sub-boundaries, right? Uh, there will be a lot of hundreds and hundreds of scenarios. Now there is a mechanism of uh, collapsing the scenario because our idea is uh, to develop a response plan. So many of those attacks, you might have a exact same response, right? Uh, and if, in that case, you can collapse that scenarios, right? But we still have developed about more than 200 scenarios like this uh, in our run book. Now, once you have this scenario, now we need an overarching process of when the incident happens, what do we do step by step, what technical steps, what communication step, what management steps we are going to take and when we are going to declare an incident, uh, how we are going to prioritize and, and so forth. So Tanya is going to cover uh, the communication and overall incident management process aspect and there is a template for that too. We like templates. So there is a template for that too. Um, so she will explain more about the overarching process template. Thanks Rahul. So here we provided a template for incident response processes which details the flow of information and communications in elections office. On the top level, you'll see we've outlined sample systems and the contact information for each system owner. For example, we have physical security, our tally system, our election management system, our e-poll book, our voter registration system, our mail voting system, election results, voting systems, etc. other systems that any election office can fill in. On the next level, we have a decision step. Is this a security incident? Or is it operational or some other type of incident? If yes, it is a security incident, then we move to the next level where we activate our analysis and prepare for um, activating our teams. Uh, Rahul went over our sample scenario templates. We would review those um, and any others that are in our incident management handbook. We've identified low priority incidents where internal members of our team would review the analysis and prepare for a resolution. Moderate incidents are ones where we would engage our vendors or other state or federal officials such as DHS. And high incidents are those where we would engage our communications team for external messaging. On the next level, we've outlined the relevant work groups. So for Cook County and Chicago, we have elections IT, we have security, elections management, and communications. But in smaller jurisdictions where election officials wear several hats and there are very cross-functional teams, um, their staff could easily modify the template and make it 
uh, useful for their offices. On the last step, we have post-incident review, where we look at what went well, what can be approved, and what changes or process are needed in the steps. So to quickly summarize, uh, the Cook County Clerk's Office and Chicago Board of Elections Commissioners internally developed incident response and management tools based on recommendations from NIST, EI ISAC, and Harford Belfort Center. It's truly a multifaceted approach for consistent and systematic processes. Our offices are working year round on continuous improvements, and we hope that the public will gain a greater level of confidence knowing that local election officials are using well utilized um, and improved incident response plans. So here we've listed some references which are included in the white paper. Uh, the white paper will be tweeted out by the Voting Village and will also be posted on the Cook County Clerk's website. If there are any local election officials present today, we're happy to meet with you after the session and talk about the templates in a little more detail. And if we have time, we can answer a few questions now as well. Okay, thanks. Okay, yes. How often do you review your plans? So, yeah. Yeah, each election cycle we review the plans. Um, we have a weekly cybersecurity meeting where we go into detail about new developments and that includes not only our IT team but as well as uh, the elections management and security. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. I mean, this is not a one-time job, right? I mean, we, we have to review it and uh, in all, off election cycle, typically we have an election in either March or April, and then November. So um, off election cycle, this should be reviewed with all the system owners, right? And uh, whenever you have a technical change, like your detection mechanism changes, your protection mechanisms changes, then it has to be updated, right? Can you talk about some of the incidents that Cook County has experienced? We haven't experienced any. Uh, not to that, um, you know, I mean, not to the medium or high level, so nothing that, that's, you know, uh, affected us uh, from the recovery point of view. Right. Yes, uh, so um, yeah, I mean, that, that's very important because we rely on our um, partners a lot. Uh, we are lucky, we are in Chicago, I mean, Cook County and, and city of Chicago, and they have a DHS um, Region 5 head office, I want to say, yes, uh, is, is in Chicago. So every off election cycle, we do a they, they have a whole publication of services that they provide for all the critical infrastructure. We leverage each and every one of them, right? On, in off election cycle, either it's a cyber hygiene, um, a red team, um, the remote penetration testing, so many things that they offer, uh, even physical security, um, and, and we leverage them. On election day, we invite all of our partners, uh, even the Verizon or any other, you know, I mean, the, the, your uh, communication partners, uh, DHS is on site, um, uh, and they are there on the election day. Uh, we, we start at like 3 or 4 a.m. around, and then stay till 1 o'clock at midnight, but they are, they are there uh, most of the time. Um, yeah, I mean, IT partners, security partners, they are, and then we have a, um, I'm not sure if, uh, if, uh, if it is available to all the jurisdiction, but there is a situation room, so we are on the situation room on the election day all day. Uh, yeah, so it's very important that that communication line is open in your uh, election cycle, and all the planning activity you can always schedule in an off-election cycle. So, uh, Last question. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Do you have a tool to generate the 
Yes, so uh, like Tanya mentioned earlier, if you are election officials and if you need, uh, I mean, need to discuss this further, we can definitely share uh, the approach. Um, we can help you develop your own template. Um, and uh, this PowerPoint and, and the paper will be tweeted out by the DEFCON and it will be available on our websites as well. So, <laughs> sorry. Is there, uh, uh, we can meet you after the. Okay. Thank you.